I like uh, your idea that um, you can have several different layers of data lineage. You don't have to build everything at once. Um, maybe it's worth just talking through like how you get started with this. Like, um, what do you need to do? Like, do you build the data catalog first and then worry about lineage? Like, what's the order of this? The way I think about this, as you think about the category, is all of these problems are very interrelated, uh, and there used to be a world where you know, these were almost like separate, separate software category products. Like there would be like, you know, this like separate data catalog, separate data lineage, separate data governance, separate data stewardship, like these were all. But if you think about, if you fundamentally break this down, the fundamental problem you're trying to solve is you're trying to create a single source of truth across your data ecosystem. And that single source of truth translates into all of these different applications. One use case of that is making it really easy for people to find data. Another use case of it is like prevent breaking changes uh, or root cause analysis of dashboards. Another use case of it is compliance and GDPR. And that's just the, those are the way I think about it is they're kind of like use cases more than, you know, like categories, right? Um, and so the way we see this or the pattern that we see is you invest in building your metadata foundation. And we think of this as almost like your control plane. Like the data plane needs a control plane. Uh, and that control plane needs to be in the metadata layer. And so what you want to do is basically invest in building a foundational metadata layer, which is building this data 360 of sorts across your enterprise. Um, and then on top of that, you almost enable use cases. So the pattern we see is that, you know, that we, we've mapped 14 use cases for this, each of which have, have business value, et cetera. So typically what you want to do is you want to invest in platform, but enable the first or the second use case. Uh, and that's dependent. And then you kind of grow over time. And the first or the second use case is a function of what's most important to your business today. Is the biggest bottleneck that you're having root cause analysis and, you know, um, or, or breaking changes in dashboards is the biggest challenge that you're having compliance is the biggest challenge that you're having democratization and self-service. Depending on that, you kind of prioritize which use cases you want to enable and then go along. Okay. So, I mean, you mentioned a lot of sort of common business problems there. I'm wondering, is there, do you have um, advice on how or which bits of data you should get started with? Like, do you start with the easy, simple um, data sets to, or do you start with like the business critical um, data sets? Like, where do you begin? Yeah, that's a great question. And the way I think about this is from an, yeah, you kind of break it down into implementation complexity versus implementation value. Uh, and in an ideal case, you are going after something that is high value, low effort. Uh, and the reason for this is just, you know, you want to as quickly as possible get to business value. Uh, and you want to start proving as much business value as possible. Uh, so the best examples of this that I've seen have been actually, are, like we have, we have teams that actually have this quadrant and it's basically based on value and complexity. Um, and they're basically like, you know, there's there's dots on it and they're prioritizing new use cases that they want to handle soon. Uh, so, you know, it's not a straightforward answer because for example, if the most business critical problem to solve is something that's going to take you a year to solve. And this is not because it's hard to build. Like the, this, the technology systems part of this today is actually the easy part of the problem uh, or the easier part of the problem. Today, like with, if you pick the right tool, uh, I don't think that's the hard part of the problem. Uh, the hard part of the problem is the human last mile that's important. Like for example, things like metric definitions, like what does a metric mean? How do we define customer? no tool in the world is going to define a business, like how a business defines customer, right? So if it's if it's a use case like that and it's going to take you six months to drive change management, then, you know, you could argue that maybe there's a slightly lesser, like high, like slightly lower impact, higher, like lesser effort use case that you want to enable first. So what we typically do is, you know, I think what people get wrong with this is strategy. Uh, and they don't invest the amount of time it takes to get the strategy right. Uh, and, you know, we, we highly recommend, like, in fact, like we now in our university have this 
we have like a video on why strategy is important. And we'd be like, don't buy it. Like, unless you see this, like you have to like align to this. Um, because at the end of the day, when you're thinking about building a single source of truth, and this is true for any CRM system, like Salesforce, Lattice for people management. Like if you're, the minute it's not just a tool, which is switch on, switch off, right? Like for example, data ingestion is a switch on, switch off tool. Uh, anything that sits one layer above, that's a little bit more strategic in nature across the organization, needs people buying across the organization. Uh, and so if you get the strategy wrong, everything else breaks. Um, and so that's, for example, been a very, very big investment that we've made in like saying, how can we be a strategic partner in the journey that we, that, that we help our customers take? 